here's where the problems begin, I would say. The first problem is obviously the one about privacy in the sense that um, to use these things effectively, we would have to collect the data. Now, the good news is that there have been a number of proposals about those apps. Some use location data, so they know where you are and who else has, has, is there. Other projects use this proximity so method, which means they only know how far from each other you are. So not who you are and where you are, but how far from each other you are. Now that seems to be a more privacy preserving option. And so it gets, at least here in Europe, it has gotten quite a lot of traction precisely because it promises to be more privacy uh, preserving. Um, and let's assume that privacy is preserved while this is happening, when the two phones connect with each other because they don't connect with the numbers or with the names, but they connect with IDs that are being generated constantly. So you wouldn't know who the person is. Eventually, however, if we want the digital proximity tracing to do something, we want it to lead to some proper contact tracing, which means that downstream and at some point we would have to identify this person so this person can get care, can be um, uh, told what to do in terms of testing or, or quarantine, etc. So one of the things I'm missing in some of the presentations of the contact tracing shiny promise is the uh, sequence of events. Yes, privacy preserving upstream, but what's happening downstream? And how do we connect these pieces along the way to when we tell people this is safe, and secure and you, data you know, are used anonymously. Well, somewhere downstream, you are going to be identifying that's the whole purpose of the exercise. Um, the second, I think, difficulty that I'm, I'm seeing with these kind of apps is that none of them has been really tested or validated. Of course, it's early days and maybe the, these things will happen or this is a call out there for people to do it. They are systems that, from the engineering perspective, they look very attractive, they're clever, you know, they are very promising, but they have to, to fulfill a certain purpose. And we don't know how they really work. We don't even know the risk scores, for example, how close, for how long, what exactly it means given the, the circumstances, what if both people wear masks, or if they're in open air or in closed rooms, all of those things will determine the, the risk um, of the exposed person. So we don't know this. We don't know how many people we need to have using those in order to be effective, et cetera, et cetera. And, and in some sense, for me, this is a huge social experiment that we're all going to be either invited or forced to take part uh, with many, many unknowns. And that is one of my worries. I, again, I want to say that I still think the digital will play a role, but I'm sort of, you know, raising the, the, the worries rather than the promises. There's lots of people who talk about how shiny and promising this is. Um, there's going to be a big question around the voluntariness of that and what voluntariness mean is going to mean here. Is it voluntary to download the app? And if you voluntarily download it, you then voluntarily using it or you can forget your phone at home. Um, if you voluntarily use it, download it and use it, and then you're notified, what happens then? What are your obligations then? Are you obliged to, con to contact health authorities? Are you obliged to you know, um, comply with quarantine protocols? The sequence of those events, again, is a bit unclear, at least again in the, in the cases and the countries that I'm looking at, there is um, little clarity, lots of questions, but little clarity. Um, another issue that I'm seeing, and I, I really have no idea how this is going to play out. If you look at mortality uh, from COVID, but also if you look at how pe badly people are hit in terms of financial consequences, unemployment, etc., what we're seeing is that those who are worst hit are people in lower socioeconomic quantiles. Um, now, couple that with what we know about a lot of data analytics and technologies that seem to are biased and, you know, have a bunch of other problems. How can we guarantee that um, these kinds of technologies are not going to either exacerbate or, you know, scale the, the existing inequalities that we have? Are they going to have 
are we going to equally benefit from those or some people who are going to be those who are well off and typically get to benefit more often from what's happening with technology are going to follow the same we're going to follow the same path what happens to those to those questions and then um the the last perhaps worry that i have when we're introducing those technologies in a form of an experiment but presented to us as like a perfect a wonderful solution is what are their lasting effects going to be in a case of an emergency right now we don't have anything else uh, we're throwing everything we have at the problem including our digital half-cooked um, ideas how are we gonna going to guarantee that there is an expiration date for those systems uh, especially when they're presented to us as the tools with which we transition and the tools with which we create the new normal. They're not presented to us as, okay, you're going to have to stay home for two weeks. No, we're told we're going to use these tools in order to be able to move around and you know, create your new normality.